You get to know what happens next in the autopsy theater? Wait, let's see it now. But before that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated about our new videos. Autopsy, also called postmortem examination or abduction, is a specialized surgical procedure of the body of a dead person. The word autopsy comes from the Greek word autopsia, which means to see for oneself. Autopsy may be area specific or whole body examination. There are mainly two types of autopsies medical legal autopsy or forensic autopsy, clinical or pathological autopsies, clinical or pathological autopsies are conducted for research purpose and they throw light into disease pattern, efficiency of a recent surgery or any clinical treatment, pathological abnormality detection and also on the quality of the hospital care. In other cases like clinical ones, the physician who was treating the patient for a while will be asked to be the present in the autopsy theater and he can be a silent observer. Medical legal autopsy is commonly referred to as the forensic autopsy is done to find the cause and manner of death or sometimes to identify the dead body. Based on the forensic autopsy report, the deaths are classified into natural, accidental, homicidal, suicidal, undetermined. Autopsy procedures might vary based on the purpose for which it is conducted but as a general pattern, this is what happens. Each and every inch of the corpse is photographed and the entire process of the postmortem is videographed in many countries. Pictures at the initial stage will be taken with subjects clothes on and after they have been removed. This gives the pathologist an idea about the external injuries or struggle possibilities. Fingerprints of all possible fingers will be taken and recorded individually. If the body is in an advanced stage of decomposition making the fingerprint fetching impossible, the physician cuts the skin carefully around the corpse wrist and take off the skin around the hand. The pathologist can wear this skin like a glove and record the fingerprint of the deceased. The body is later subjected to an x-ray examination to have a look into the body without tampering it. Bone abnormalities, locations of bullet, etc. can be found in x-ray. X-ray spectrometry is also done to trace evidence like gunpowder deposit or paint flakes on the body. The forensic pathologists are well versed in examining and testing the body fluids. The blood and vitreous humor from the eyes provide valuable information about the toxicology, DNA typing and physiological conditions of the patient. Vitreous humor being a cellular and isolated from other body fluids can reveal alcohol or drug abuse in the body. Metabolic disorders like diabetes can also be identified and quantified. Done with the external examinations and closely noting down and imaging all the important observations, the pathologist will now proceed for the internal examination. Before cutting open the body, the torso is placed on a rubber or wooden block, extending the body arc and thus creating greater access to the thoracic and abdomen area. It is unusual to examine the face, arms, hands and legs internally. The internal examination begins with a large deep Y-shaped incision made from shoulder to shoulder, meeting at the breastbone or sternum and extending as a single line all down till the pubic bone. Some pathologists use T incision also if the subject is male. In either cases, there is little or no blood shed as there is no heart pumping and the only blood pressure comes from gravity. After the Y incision is made, the skin is peeled back and the muscle and soft tissue is detached using a scalpel. This exposes the ribcage and neck muscles. Two cuts are made on each side of the ribcage and it is pulled out from the skeleton. Larynx, esophagus, arteries, ligaments, etc. are cut and detached. Organs attached to the spinal cord as well as attachment to the bladder and sternum are severed and now the entire organs can be pulled out for detailed inspection. Blood vessels, major ones, are bisected and examined. In due course of examination, all organs are weighed and examined. Weighing of organs like heart or lungs is done because some type of illness can cause reduction or increase in weight.
Examination for wound and their type and depth can lead to valuable clues, especially in homicidal cases. Tissue samples taken from organs in the form of slices are viewed microscopically. The organs, if they are to be retained outside the body, are fixed in formalin, which facilitates firming and preservation. Firming using formalin helps in further detailed investigation. Tissue samples are sometimes frozen and stored for further legal implications. The physician can also order for toxicological and gas chromatography of blood in tissue samples to look for poisoning and metabolic byproduct as a. Later, the abdomen examination begins. The stomach and intestine contents are examined and weighed. This could be useful to find the cause and time of death due to the natural passage of food through the bowel during digestion. The emptier the area, the longer the deceased had gone without a meal before death. Injuries, if any, to the intestine, spleen, gallbladder, etc. are paid detailed attention. The final stage of examination is the head and the brain examination. For this, the rubber or the wooden block is moved to elevate the head. The skull is cut open by making a cut across the crown of the head from the bony bump behind one ear to the other. Skin and hair are peeled back, exposing the skull. Using a circular or a semicircular saw, the top of the skull is cut off and the skull cap is removed with a chisel, revealing the brain. Brain examination can show whether the deceased had degenerating diseases like Alzheimer's or meningitis. If necessary, the brain is taken out, weighed and examined. Tissue samples are taken for further record. Brain, if retained for clinical purposes, needs to be fixed in formalin. Reconstitution of the body is the final step after examination of the corpse. The organs are returned to the body, unless otherwise ordered. If the organs are returned, they are placed in bags to prevent leakage. The body is being sewed back using the characteristic baseball stitch and the prior to this that the cavity are lined with cotton wool or similar material to give it the normal appearance. The autopsy is finished and the body is now intact. Based on the observation and pathological and toxicological research, the forensic physician now prepares the report with the sufficient photographs and video recordings.